In this tutorial, I will show you how to create these stylized hand-painted pumpkins in Blender. So we're going to start off by modeling the basic stylized pumpkin, and then we are going to be texture painting the pumpkin. And then after that, we'll do the lighting and the rendering to get this finished image here. Now, real quick before we start, tutorials like these are made possible thanks to my Gumroad customers and my patron supporters and my members on the YouTube memberships. So if you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will have links in the description description to where you can support the channel. And on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, you can get access to 3D models and assets. You also get access to the tutorial files and artwork project files and procedural materials and other Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. And if you join the YouTube memberships, then you'll be helping to support the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. But also just liking my videos, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and all that really does help me out because it helps my videos get out to more people. And I'll also have links in the description to where you can purchase the project files of this tutorial if you'd like to purchase them. Now for the texture painting, I am going to be using a drawing tablet. And I would highly recommend using a drawing tablet if you're able to. Because it's actually much more difficult to texture paint with a mouse, it's much better to use a tablet for many reasons. For one thing, you can have better posture when you're using a drawing tablet for texture painting, you're also able to make nice smooth strokes, and you're also able to use the pen pressure in the pen. So I'm going to be using my Huion screen drawing tablet, but you definitely don't need something that fancy, even if you can just use one of those smaller pad tablets, that's going to be way better than using a mouse. And if you're interested in purchasing a drawing tablet, I will have Amazon links in the description to some different tablets that I recommend, and those are affiliate links, so if you purchase something through those links, that'll help me out, but with no extra cost to you. Now at the end of the tutorial series, when we're setting up the lighting, I am going to be using this Forest Cave HDRI, and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, so I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download it. And I'm going to download the 1K HDR version, and I'll just download this to help us get some nice realistic lighting and reflections on the pumpkin. So the first thing that we need to do is model the pumpkin. So here I am in Blender, and I'm just going to press the A key to select everything, and then I'm going to press X, and we're going to click on on delete. Always make sure you delete the default cube. So I'm now going to press shift A and to model the pumpkin I'm going to add a UV sphere. And then I'm going to zoom into the sphere and I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. Now I want to scale the sides out so I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices right there. And then I also want to turn on the proportional editing so you can press the O key or you can also just click right there to turn on the proportional editing. So I can now press S and that's going to scale it. And you can see when I scroll my mouse wheel, that's going to change the size of the proportional editing and whatever vertices are in the circle, it's going to be pulled along with the selection. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit and place it there. So it's a bit more of the shape of a pumpkin. So I'm now going to select this top vertex right there and I'm going to press G to grab and hit Z, bring it down on the Z axis. And I'm going to scroll with my mouse wheel to make the proportional editing smaller and just bring that down right there. Let's do the same thing for the bottom. So navigate right over here. I'm going to select this vertex and I'm going to press G and Z. Just bring that up on the Z axis and maybe scroll my mouse wheel out just a little and just bring that in. All right, so I'm now going to go over to like this bottom loop here and I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop right there. And then I can press S to scale again and I can scroll my mouse wheel to make that a bit bigger and just give that a bigger shape there. So it's almost like a pear shape. So it kind of comes out and it's at its biggest point kind of right down here and then it kind of goes in. So I'll scale that up a little little bit more, maybe bring down the proportional editing by scrolling my mouse wheel, something like that. So I'm now going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to select a loop right there. And then I'm going to move three loops over. So one, two, three, and then I'm actually going to go to the fourth one here and then ho hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop right there. So this way there are three loops of vertices going vertical in between these two ones that are selected. So I'm now going to navigate over here and I'm going to skip three more. So one, two, three, and then hold down the shift and and alt key and select that loop and then just continue to do that so shift alt select that loop 
and shift alt select that loop and i'm just going to continue to do this all the way around and then also right here at the end i'm actually going to hold down the shift and alt key and select that one right there and then shift alt select that one right there and i don't mind that it's not exactly the same on all sides you can see there's actually only one loop there and if you wanted to you could actually do this on purpose to make the pumpkin so it's not exactly the same all the way around so what i'll do is just hold down the shift and alt key and deselect that loop right there and select this one and then also shift alt select that one there so this way some loops have bigger spaces in between them but then other loops have smaller spaces in between them and that'll make it a bit more organic and random and natural so i now want to scale this all in to make the shape of the pumpkin so i'm going to press s and then we're just going to scale this in and i need to scroll my mouse wheel to make the size of the proportional editing smaller and i'm going to bring that down you can see now it's really starting to look like a pumpkin so place it about there all right so i'm going to press the tab key to go back to object mode and then you can see it's really blocky so the first thing that i'm going to do is use the object context menu to shade this smooth and then it's shaded smooth but it still is very low poly so i'm going to click right over here to go to the modifier properties and i'm going to click on add modifier and i'm going to go right down here and add the subdivision surface modifier and this will give it more geometry and smooth it out and also on the levels viewport and render i could turn these both up to three so that it is very smooth now I want to make these edges a bit sharper so I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and I can press Control R to add a loop cut and I'm going to click and then drag down and then click and place it there so it's pretty close to the crease. Let's go to the next one and press Control R and I'm going to click and drag down place it there and then also what we could do for another one is hold down the alt key and just select the loop and I could add a bevel so I could press Control B and that's going to bevel that and I'm going to bring it out place it there. So if I tab to go back to object mode, you can see this is what it's doing. So because we're adding loop cuts in there, it is sharpening up where those creases are. And that's looking really cool. So let's tab to go back into edit mode, control R to add a loop cut, click and then drag down, place it there. And then control R to add another loop cut, drag this one down there. And then on this side, let's do it on the other side. So control R to add a loop cut click and then drag down and place that there and then also i might just do the bevel again so i'm going to hold down the alt key select that loop right there and you can press Control b to add a bevel and we're just going to scale that up and place it there and then let's just finish these off so Control r to add a loop cut bring that down and Control r to add a loop cut and then also one more right here add another loop cut there so now we've gone all the way around so if i tab to go back to object mode you can see that is much sharper there and it gives the pumpkin a nice stylized look now I do want to make the entire pumpkin more random. I want to make it a little bit more lumpy. So I'm going to select the pumpkin, press the tab key to go back into edit mode, and we still have the proportional editing on. So I'm going to select a vertex and then I can press G to grab and I'm going to scroll the mouse wheel so it's bigger, place that there, select another vertex, G to grab, and I'm just going to continue to do that. So selecting random vertices here and there, pressing G to grab, you could also press S to scale or R to rotate. I think that actually is pretty cool. I might rotate some of these so that the crease right in there is just rotated over a little bit. I think that's pretty cool. Just kind of giving it a little bit of randomness because this is an organic pumpkin. So it's not gonna be the same exact shape all the way around. It's gonna be a little bit random and a little bit different here and there. But I definitely don't wanna overdo it. I don't wanna make it too noticeable. It's just gonna be very subtle, but it will be a little bit different on all sides. All right, and there we go so that is looking really great let's save this blender file now so i'm going to press Control s to save and i'll just save this blender file in a folder with all of my files and i'll rename it to pumpkin.blend let's click on save as so now as you're working on the project you can press Control s and that is going to save the blender file and also i don't need this timeline right down here so just to close this i can click right here on the crosshair pairs click and then drag up and drag down and let go to close the timeline so we have a bit more space here all right so so the next thing that I want to model is the pumpkin stem. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder. Now right after you add the cylinder, before you click away or move it around, you can see right next to me there's the add cylinder settings. So let's just open this up and then I'm going to change the vertices to eight so it is much more low poly. And then I can close the add cylinder settings. So I'm now going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and I can press S to scale. And you can see we actually have the proportional editing on so I can just click right here to turn it off 
I can press S to scale and then G to grab. Let's hit Z to bring it up on the Z axis and then scale this down even more. All right, and then I'm going to click right up here to go to the face select. You can also press the three on the top of your keyboard. And I'm gonna navigate down here. It might be easier to do this in the wireframe and I'm just gonna select the bottom face there and then go back to solid view. So I'm going to press E to extrude, bring that down, S to scale. We're just gonna scale that up and just continue to extrude it and scale it and just create the pumpkin stem. So scale that up. I also might press the A key to select everything and then press S to scale and bring this up on the Z axis. And then again, you can select that bottom face there and it might be easier to do this in the wireframe. So you can go into wireframe, select the bottom face there and I'll scale this up a bit more and then extrude it down like that. I can also select this face right here and I wanna scale this down even more and I actually wanna rotate it over so you can hit R to rotate, just rotate that over and then extrude it up and rotate it over, maybe even scale it up a little bit like that. And then if you wanna move around some of these loops, you can go right back over here to the vertex select. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices right there. And I can rotate it and move it over and just kind of make the pumpkin stem have kind of a bit more of a random shape. And then you can press the tab key to go back to object mode. And I want to give this a subdivision surface modifier. So the shortcut key is control two. So the control and then two on the top of your keyboard, but you can also click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface. And then using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth. So now I want to add some loop cuts in here to sharpen this up. So press the tab key to go into edit mode. I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut click right here and then drag up and click to place it right there. I can also hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices there. And I can press S to scale, scale that up a little bit. And I could also do the same thing with the proportional editing. So press the O key to turn on the proportional editing. And then you can press G to grab with a few vertices selected. Press G to grab and just kind of move this around. It might be easier to do this in the wireframe. So you can hold down the Z button and go to wireframe and then just kind of move these around, maybe even bring this up a little bit just making it a bit more random looking. And then you could also press the A key to select everything and kind of zoom out there. And I might just want to scale the entire thing up just a little bit, maybe even bring it up a little bit on the Z axis. All right, so there we go. Something like that is pretty good. I think I also want to add a loop cut in there or kind of sharpen that up there. So back in edit mode, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices there. I can press S to scale. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel down and press G to grab and bring this down on the Z axis just to sharpen that up a little bit and press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can press control S to save. So there we have it. There's the modeling of the pumpkin. So we now need to set up the pumpkin model for the texture painting. So the first step to setting that up is to add a material. So I'm going to select the main object here and let's actually click right over here to go to the shading tab. And in the shading workspace here, I have the shader nodes right here and the 3D space right here. So I'm just going to click on new here to add a new material and I can rename the material to pumpkin. All right, so now we have a basic material, but to texture paint the pumpkin, we need to add an image texture that we can actually texture paint on. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for an image texture and let's drop the image texture right down here. And then I want to click on new to actually create a new image texture. Now on the name here, I can just rename this to like pumpkin. And then also on the width and height here, I want this to be a 4K texture. So that's the resolution of the texture. So it's the quality. So to make this a 4K texture, I can click and then drag down and then let go. And that way we can change both values at the same time. And I'm going to type in 4096 and then hit enter. So it's 4096 pixels by 4096 pixels. And that is standard for a 4K texture. Now on the color here, I can click on this and I want to make this the base color of the pumpkin. So I'm going to make it very bright and then I'm going to make it kind of a orangey color, kind of like a light orange, something like that. And then I can click on OK. So I can now take the color here, pull out a wire and we're going to put that into the base color of the principal shader. And then if you want to preview this, you can hold down the Z button and you can move your mouse into the material preview to actually preview that. 
So we now have a base color for the pumpkin. Now before we start with the texture painting, we need some way to tell the 3D object how it's going to be placed on the 2D texture. And so to do this, we need to UV unwrap the mesh. So let's actually click right up here on Blender's UV editing workspace to UV unwrap this. So I'm going to zoom in here and make sure you're in edit mode of the pumpkin object. And I'm going to press the A key to select everything. So here's the UV mapping and it already has a UV mapping on default because we started with a UV sphere and a UV sphere has UV mapping on default. But I want to re UV unwrap this so it is better for the texture painting. And I actually have a specific tutorial on UV unwrapping for beginners. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, link will be in the description. So we first need to add seams to tell the object how it's going to be cut out. And then we can UV unwrap this and we'll cut it out and place it flat here on the 2D texture. So I'm going to press the tab key to go back to object mode. And I don't want to be able to see the stem here. So you could just hide the stem object. What you can also do is hit the forward slash on the numpad and that is going to take you into local view of the object so we can just see this object. And then I will tab to go back into edit mode. So I'm going to add seams going all the way down here and that's going to cut out the mesh. But I first need to cut out the mesh right here and then we can cut out these bigger chunks. So I need to add seams right here in the center. So the first thing that I'm going to do is press 7 on the numpad for top view and I'm going to zoom in. And I don't actually want to be able to preview the subsurf modifier just because it kind of overlaps some of the vertices here. So just for now, if you click right over here to go to the modifier properties, I'm going to click on this button right here to hide the subsurf modifier from the view. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into wireframe view. So I want to cut out the mesh and lay it out flat into four big pieces. So the first thing that I need to do is add seams right here in the center so that we can actually cut this out. So I'm going to press B for the box select and I'm going to drag a box around these vertices and let go. So we have all those inner vertices selected and I can hold down the Z button and go back to solid view. And then I also want to cut out these edges here into four separate parts. So to do this, I want to add seams and the seams are going to be from the center and the seams are going to go all the way down here and then connect to the bottom there. And that way we'll be able to cut out the pumpkin into four large shapes. So I'm going to press seven on the numpad again to go to top view. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop of vertices right there and make sure that the loop is going all the way in and connecting to that inner circle there. And then if I navigate right down here to the bottom again make sure that's going in there so I can now hold down the shift and alt key and I'm going to select that loop right there and again make sure that one is connecting and going all the way in there let's go to the next one so like right here if I tried to select this one by holding down the shift and alt key and selecting that one there that loop is one of the loops that we added we added it by pressing Control R so it's not actually connecting to the center there so I don't want to select that one so I want to hold down the shift and alt key and select that right there so now that is all connected and again, if I flip back over here, you can see it's going all the way through and connecting. So let's do one more right here. So hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop right there. And then I can navigate down here and just make sure it's all connected. All right, so we've now selected all of the inner parts and also the parts around the edges. So we can now add seams here. And then the seams are going to actually cut out the mesh when we UV unwrap it. So I'm going to press the U button and then I'm going to click on mark seam. You can see the selection has now turned red there. And that is Blender telling us where the seams are. So I can now press the A key to select everything. And then I can press the U button again to bring up the unwrap settings up. And I'm going to click on unwrap. And you can see that it has split up the mesh into four large different pieces. And those are these pieces here. So that piece and that piece and that piece and that piece. Now I do want to optimize this a little bit better because I want to be able to use as much of the texture space as possible. So press the A key to deselect everything. And you can also drag this over to make the UV editor bigger. So you can now hover your mouse over the island and then you can press the L key and that is going to select all the linked vertices. So it's going to select the whole entire UV island. So I can now press R to rotate and G to grab. I'm going to bring this over here and hit S to scale and scale this up. Now we want these islands to be as big as possible, but we don't want them to be overlapping. And we also don't want them to be going out of the image. So just scale that up a, as big as you can. So it's using as much of the pixels. So I can press the A key to deselect everything and then press the L key to select that 
island right there. I can rotate it over and scale it up and place it about there. Press the A key to deselect, hover your mouse over this island right here, press the L key to select it. I also need to zoom in here and press the L key to select that little piece there and L to select that little piece. I can scale this up and press G to grab and R to rotate and I'll press S to scale and just make that as big as you can to about there. All right, and then press the A key to deselect and press the L key to select the link vertices and we'll scale up this last one and just make it as big as we can. But again, make sure there isn't any overlapping, that is very important. And just to check to make sure there's no overlap, you can press the A key to deselect everything and then you can click on select and then you can click on select overlap and you can see nothing was selected, so that is great. All right, so we have now finished UV unwrapping the pumpkin, so I'm gonna click right here on the modifier to show the subsurf modifier. I can press the tab key to go back to object mode, and now we can do the texture painting. So I'm gonna click right over here on the texture painting tab. This is gonna take us into the texture painting workspace. So you can see we can actually preview our UV editing right here, and then we can preview the 3D space right here, and it's already put us into the texture painting mode. So I'm now going to bring this over to my drawing tablet and we can get started with the texture painting. Now you can texture paint on the flat texture right over here, but I prefer to texture paint on the 3D mesh. It's much more intuitive to texture paint on the 3D mesh. Now I also wanna see this in the local view because I don't actually wanna see the stem object. So I'm gonna hit the forward slash on the numpad. That's gonna take me into local view of the object so we can just see this object. So I'm gonna start by texture painting a gradient. So we're gonna have it be a little bit more of a red color down here, and then as it comes up, it's gonna be more of a yellow color, and then it'll be kind of orange in the middle. So I'm first gonna click right here and make this really small just so that we have more space. And then I'm also going to click right over here to go to the fill tool. We don't wanna use the brush here, we wanna use the fill tool when doing the gradient. And then I can also press the T button to close that side panel. And also let me make sure I turn on my screencast keys so you can see what buttons I'm pressing right down there in the corner, but I'm not actually using a mouse, I'm using my tablet pen. So now that we are using the fill tool, we need to set up the gradient. So I'm gonna open up this side panel here to make it a bit bigger, and I'm over here on the active tool and workspace settings. And I'm just gonna go right down here to the brush settings, and there is a color picker, and I'm gonna change this to gradient. So now I need to change the colors of the gradient. So I'm going to click on the black tab and click right here. And I'm going to make this a bright color. And then I'm going to make it kind of a reddish orangey color. So something like that. And then I'm going to click right here on the white tab and click on the color. And this one I'm going to make kind of a light yellow color. But it is going to be a little bit orange. All right. So because we set this to the fill tool and because we changed the color picker here from color to gradient, I can now click and drag and that is going to add a line here and then when I let go it's going to actually make the gradient so I'm going to press Control Z to undo that you can see what is happening so I think I actually might click right here click on this color and make it like a little bit less red maybe just slightly more orange so when you click down that's going to start the line and that's where the gradient is going to start and then I'm going to bring it up here and wherever the line ends that's where the gradient will finish so I do want the gradient to be pretty subtle so it's not super sharp I don't want it to be really small like that I want to make it really long so I'm going to have it go all the way up and then just drop it right about there and I'm doing this on side view so that the gradient starts down here and it goes all the way up so that is looking very cool and that makes it look a lot more stylized so that is really it for the gradient so I'm now going to press the T button to bring up the settings here and I'm going to go back to the draw brush here and then press the T button again to close that and then make sure this is back to color here on the color picker now you can change the color over here in the brush settings but I'm actually going to close all these and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we have a bit more space Space. Also, I'm going to click right here, drag up, and then let go to close that. I am going to use the color, which is right here. So I'm going to change this color to kind of an orangey color, but then I'm going to make it darker. So it's going to be kind of a dark brown orange color. And I'm going to use this to paint the insides right there of the creases to make the creases look like they're going back in more. And I think I'll make this a little bit darker, maybe a bit more red. And you can press the F key if you want to change the size of the brush, or you can also click right here to drag the radius. So I'm going to make this much smaller. So hit the F button, make this much smaller, and then click and place it there. And then I also want to turn the strength down, so I'm going to drag this down a bit so the strength is smaller. 
border. And then I can just start to go along here and I can start to paint in there in the crease. And that's just gonna make it darker. Now I do wanna be able to preview this a little bit better. So I'm actually gonna change the matte cap. So if you click right here on the drop down arrow, you can actually change the matte cap. You could use matte cap here, or you could also use like studio. I'm gonna try out some of these because I want like a really bright one. So I'm gonna go with this here. So if you click on the studio lighting, I'm gonna go with this one right here. And you can also change the rotation by clicking on this little world icon. And then you can drag the rotation here if you wanna rotate that light. So I'm just going to start to go along here and just make all the creases a little bit darker. So I'm just painting down there, making that crease a little bit darker. I think I'll press the F key to make my brush a little bit bigger and then go along there and just make it a bit smaller. And also just painting kind of around here in the center because I want this to be a bit darker as well. All right, I'm going to go along here on the bottom. Just keep on painting that in there. And if you wanna see how it looks on the flat texture, then you can click and drag and open this up. And then you can click on this button right here to hide the overlays and you can see what we've created. It kinda of looks like some little fall leaves. So I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller because I don't really need to see this. All right, so I'm just gonna to continue to go along here, just kinda of darkening in those creases there so that it's a bit stronger and you're able to see it better and just painting down there all right that looks good also go here to the bottom and I'm going to go along here and just kind of paint this in so it's a bit darker just going along here you could also press the f key to make your brush bigger and then just kind of go around here in circles and I'm just lightly pressing down you can also see that I've turned the strength way down um, so that it is going to be pretty subtle and I can just add just as much as I need. All right, so it's a bit darker there and I think I'll also go up here to the top and do the same thing. Just kind of darken that in so it is a bit darker. All right, I'll press the F key to make my brush smaller again and then let's just go along here and kind of darken in all those creases. All right, just going all the way down there, creasing that all in. And because it's darker, it's gonna just kind of give it an effect that it's actually going in a bit deeper than it actually is. So it'll kind of pop out that shape of the pumpkin just a little bit better. I do want it to be pretty subtle. I don't want it to be too dark because then it will stand out too much. Um, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. It's just kind of a little bit dark. All right, we only have a few more left, so I'm just gonna keep on going along here, painting that in there. All right, let's go to the next one and go up to the top here and just kind of finish that up. And this little one right over here, this is the last one. All right, and there we have it. So you can see now all of those creases there are a bit darker. Let's press Control S to save the Blender file. Now, something that's really important is that you don't close Blender until you've saved the image because this image here, it's not actually saved as a file on our computer. So if you close Blender without saving this, then Blender's not gonna save the data. So if you wanna save a backup of this, you can click right up here on Image, and then you can click on Save As. And I'm just gonna save this as pumpkincolor.png in a folder on my computer with my other files and I'll click on save as. All right, so we've now saved this, but if we do any more texture painting, we're gonna to need to resave it. So just make sure you save your texture painted image before you close Blender. All right, so I'm gonna make this a bit smaller, just drag that smaller and let's do the next part. So I wanna make these little parts here a bit lighter. So I'm gonna press the F key to make my brush a bit bigger. And then I'm gonna click here on the color and I'm gonna make it fully white. And then I'm gonna make this a yellow color and a little bit more towards the white. So I can now just kinda of go along here and you can see the strength is turned way down so it's still pretty light. And I'm just gonna go along here and I'm just gonna make this a bit brighter. We're kind of adding in highlights. And I might even wanna make this a bit more white and maybe turn the strength up a little bit more so I can see that better. So we're just going around there and kind of lightening up the top there. It almost is going to be kind of like some fake lighting or like a highlight on the top of the stylized pumpkin. All right, so just going along all these and adding in that little bit of a lighter color there. It's a very light yellow. Just go along there and zoom in here kind of paint along there and there as well. And then I might just make this like almost fully white and just go along here and add just a final little highlight on the top there on some of these ridges and add just a little bit lighter of a color. All right, on the very tips there. And then also I think I wanna try blurring this just a little bit. So now that I finished that, I'm gonna press the T key again to open up the side panel and I'm gonna click here on the smear. And I'm just gonna go over here and I will just kind of smear this just a little bit. Now something that I don't like about the smear brush in Blender is that it can be kind of laggy. So I don't actually use it too much. That's definitely something that Blender could be improved on because you can kind of see the smear brush is kind of laggy. Um, let me just turn the strength down a little 
little bit. So I'm gonna drag the strength down so that the blur isn't quite as strong. And you can just kind of go along here. I think that the blur brush could really use some improvements in Blender because it is kind of laggy. But I am gonna use it just to kind of blur a few things. So kind of blurring those colors there, maybe even blurring these edges a little bit. If anything is a bit too sharp, you can kind of go down here and kind of blur that a bit. All right, so I'm now gonna be adding in some little streaks along the pumpkin going down. So I'm gonna click right back here to go to the draw brush. Now I actually want to add a little bit of jitter to this brush. So I'm going to click with my front pen button and drag this over. And then I can go right here to the stroke settings. And I'm going to go here to the spacing and I'm going to turn this up quite a bit. Um, let's just start with maybe 150. And then I'm going to turn the jitter up as well. So when I turn the jitter up, it's going to make the dots kind of going around a little bit because all these lines here that we're painting, they're actually just a bunch of dots which are really close to each other. But if I now start to paint, I need to press Control Z actually to undo that. I'm going to press the F key to make my brush smaller. And now if I kind of go down here and start to paint, you can see that there's kind of some jitter there in those dots and there's also some spacing. And actually, if I click right up here on the stroke, I actually don't want the spacing to be that big. So I'll turn it down a little bit. So the spacing is a bit smaller, but you can now see what we're creating. Maybe I'll just make the spacing a little bit smaller. So actually just like a 20. Let's try that. So there's a bit more spacing. You can kind of see what we're creating. And then also I think there's a little bit too much jitter, so I'll turn the jitter down. So I'm now gonna click with my front pen button and move over here and then go right here to the draw brush. And you can click right up here on the color and I'm again gonna make this like an orangey red color, but then I'm gonna make it very dark. So something like that. So I can now kind of start to go along here and I can paint a really cool texture. So you can see that it's adding those little jittery dots there and that's looking really cool. So I'm gonna go along here, maybe even turn the strength down a little bit so it's a bit harder to see. I could even zoom out a little bit so those dots are a bit bigger. And I'm just gonna go along here and add like some jittery dots there, kind of along there and there as well. Something like that is pretty cool. Maybe make my brush a little bit smaller and then just kind of going along there. So you can kind of see what we're creating, all those little dots there. And that does look pretty cool. And then we're also gonna have them going down the pumpkin as well. All right, so something like that. Um, let's also go down here to the bottom and kind of do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go along here and just kind of paint that in. All right, that is pretty good. Maybe make my brush a little bit smaller to get some smaller dots and then just go along there kind of paint in those creases and it just adds a really cool texture. All right, something like that. All right, so I'm now gonna go up here to the top and then I'm just gonna go along here, and kind of add some lines there so you can kind of see what we're creating. And I'm just gonna go along here and I think I actually might want the jitter to be even smaller. So let's go right over here and click on the stroke settings and on the jitter here, I could make this even smaller. And now I can just kind of start to go along here and add some little lines there to give a really cool texture to the pumpkin and also right here in the creases you could add a little bit there if you wanted to although the creases are a little bit strong already so i'm just going to go along here and kind of add some little creases kind of going down just kind of randomly around not too many um, but just a few here and there and i'm just going to continue to do that all around the pumpkin just kind of adding some little lines there kind of going down all right that's pretty cool and then you could also make it a bit stronger kind of at the top and bottom just going along there. And then again, if you wanna save a backup of this, you could, so I might just do that again. So I'm just gonna open up this side panel here and I can click on image and click on save as. And then I'm just going to override the previous image that we saved. So you can see it's red here and that's telling us that it's gonna override it. And I'll just click on save as. So it's gonna override that. So this is now the new save texture. And I can make this a bit smaller. All right, so I'm just gonna go along here and just continue to add that really cool texture. It's just kind of going down. All right, going down there, just adding a few here and there, and then here as well. And I am pressing very lightly with my pen, but I also have the strength turned down so that it is pretty subtle because I don't want them to be too strong. Some of them here and there, I might press down a little bit harder just so it's a little bit stronger, or I can go over it a few times just to make it a little bit darker. But most of them, I do want them to be kind of subtle. Just continue to do that all around the pumpkin and also down here and here as well. And again, right up here on the top, if you wanna to kind of make the top a bit darker and give it a cool texture, you can kind of go along here 
and just kind of darken that in there. Let's press Control S again to save the Blender file, and let's just finish this up here. All right, and there we have it. So we now have a really cool texture there on the pumpkin. Um, I'm just gonna look around here and add any more if there's any spots that I think need more, but I don't wanna overdo it too much. Um, so this is pretty good. All right, so I now want to add some lighter dots and the lighter dots are gonna be all randomly around. So to do this, I'm first gonna click here on the color and I'm gonna make this a very white kind of yellowish color like that. So let me just see how that is. So kind of draw there and I actually can't really see it very well. That's because I need to turn the strength up. So I'll turn the strength way up to like one and that is a pretty good color, but I might just make it a little bit more on the yellow and make it fully white. All right, that is a pretty good color. I'm just drawing there to check the color there. So I'll press Control Z to undo that. So also press the F key to make your brush a little bit bigger so those dots are a bit bigger. And then I'm gonna click with my front pen button and go over here and we're gonna go to the stroke settings. And I wanna turn the spacing way up. In fact, I'm actually gonna type in like 800. So the spacing is really big. So now if I click here and drag, you can see there's a huge amount of spacing. So there's only some dots here and there. I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that. And also here on the stroke, we can turn up the jitter. So I'm going to turn the jitter up quite a bit. So now I can just kind of go along here and it's just going to randomly add dots here and there. I think I might press the F key to make my brush just a little bit smaller. And then I can just kind of go along here and I can just kind of like fan back and forth and just kind of cover all the areas. And it's going to add a really cool texture here. You could also kind of go around in circles or just kind of go back and forth along there and just add in all those dots. And that's gonna really make it look more stylized and make it look like a pumpkin, a stylized pumpkin. So I'm just gonna continue to do this. It's pretty easy using that stroke method. You can just kind of tell Blender how you want the brush to act. And then we don't have to like manually click for each dot because that would be kind of hard to like manually click every time we wanted to add a dot. So this way we can just kind of drag along the drawing tablet and it's just gonna randomly add dots here and there. And of course, if you want an area to have more dots, you can just continue to kind of go around in circles there and add more dots. And also right here on the bottom, I am gonna add some here on the bottom, just kind of going back and forth and covering all those areas. And then we'll go back over here to the side and let's just keep on adding more dots there. So going around here. All right, so let's just finish this up here. So I'm just going along any more areas that don't have the dots, maybe up here add a few dots and up here as well. All right, so you can continue to texture paint this more if you want to, but I'm gonna call this finish. So I'm just going to save this one more time. So right over here, I'll just click on image and then click on save as. And I'll just override the texture one more time and I'll click on save as image. All right, so the texture painting is finished. So I'm now going to hop back over to my main setup. All right, so I brought this over back to my main monitor and I'm just gonna click right back over here on the layout. So we are now gonna set up some lighting and then we'll finish up the materials and render out a final image. So first let's set up the lighting. So I'm gonna be adding in an HDRI. So let's click right over here to go to the world properties and then you can go right here to the surface and click on the yellow dot next to color and you can choose environment texture. And then I can click on open to open up the HDRI. So here's the Forest Cave 1K HDRI that I'm going to be using. Again, link is in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI. So I'm just going to click on it and then click on Open Image. And then I am going to be using the EV rendering engine in this tutorial, but you could totally use Cycles if you want to. Cycles and EV actually look pretty similar with this result. The render is very similar, so you could totally use Cycles if you want to, but I'm going to change the render engine over here to Blender EV. And then to make EV look a little bit nicer, I'm going to turn on the screen space reflections and also the bloom here and also the ambient occlusion. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up here to go into the rendered view. And there we go. So you can see the HDRI in the background and it's giving us some nice natural lighting, lighting up our pumpkin. And then also let's click right down here on the color management and I'm going to use the view transform of filmic and I'm going to use a look here of very high contrast. And this is going to make things more contrasty and saturated and it'll look nicer. Let's press Control S again to save the Blender file. So I now want to add a camera and then I just want to point the camera right here. So I'm going to press Shift A and let's go right down here and click on camera. And then you can navigate to where you want the camera to be and you can press 
control alt numpad zero that is going to bring the camera to where you are and then i want this camera to be a square image so you can click right here to go to the output properties and just change the resolution x and y to the same values so i'm going to be rendering a large 2k image just because i want this to be very high quality so i'm going to use a resolution of 2560 by 2560 you could also just use 1920 by 1920 or 1080 by 1080 or really whatever resolution you want i want this to be a square image though so I'm going to use the same X and Y resolution and then with the camera selected you can press G to grab and you can also press G to grab and then double tap the Z key that is going to bring the camera in and out now I also want to turn up the focal length of the camera so if you click right here on the object data properties you can turn up the focal length so I'm going to be turning the focal length up to 80 because I think 80 looks pretty good. So by bringing in the focal length, it's going to make everything look a little bit more flat. And I do like the look of it. And then you can press G to grab and you can also press R to rotate. And you can also double tap the R key if you want to do the trackball rotation and just kind of move the camera around. And I'm going to actually zoom it out a little bit because I'm actually going to be adding in two smaller pumpkins. We're just going to duplicate the pumpkins and make some smaller ones. So I'm going to bring this out just a little bit. All right. Now, if I go right back over here to the world properties I actually want to make this HDRI a bit darker because it is a bit bright and I want it to be a bit darker and then we're going to add some lights around the scene to actually light up the pumpkin so right here on the world settings I'm going to turn the strength down to a 0.25 just a 0.25 so it is a bit darker so now it is pretty dark but let's add some lights so I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to go here to light and I'm going to add an area light I'm going to press G to grab bring this up here and R to rotate just kind to rotate this over so it is pointed down at the pumpkin and then if you click right over here to go to the object data properties of the light I'm gonna change the shape here from square to rectangle and then I can drag this X size or drag the Y size and I can make this really long and this way there's gonna be more light going from the top down to the bottom and then let's also turn the power up so I'm gonna make this quite a bit brighter and I think I'll turn this up to like a 450 so it's quite a bit brighter and you can also see that bloom there in Blender EV. So right over here, if you go to the render properties, we turned on the bloom here in Blender EV. And so it's gonna kind of give a bloom there to those lighter spots. And then if you click back on the light here and go to the object data properties, I'm gonna click on the color here and I'm just gonna make this a little bit yellow, kind of a yellowish orangish color, something like that. Now I also wanna add some rim lights on the back. So I'm gonna press seven on the numpad for top view and I can press shift D to duplicate and R to rotate. And we're just gonna rotate that over. You can kind of navigate down here to the side and just kind of rotate this up like that and just kind of stick it back there behind the pumpkin so it's going to add a rim light so if you press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and zoom in here you can see that rim light right there so it's just kind of showing the shape of the pumpkin better and it's also popping the pumpkin out from the background and then also i'm going to click on the color here and i'm going to make the rim light a little bit more of a blue color so something like that and i will make it a bit brighter so let's turn this up to maybe like a thousand so it's much brighter and maybe bring it a bit closer and then i can press shift D to duplicate this and R to rotate and then double tap the R key we're gonna rotate this over maybe scale it down a little bit and we're gonna stick it right there and this one is a little bit bright so I might turn this down to just like 500 so it's not quite as bright something like that and then I'm gonna select this rim light again and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and kind of double tap the R key and rotate this over so we have one more kind of shining down on the pumpkin so now we have some nice rim lights there around the pumpkin now I also want to create a background so I'm gonna press shift A I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'm gonna add a plane and I'm gonna press G to grab bring this over I can also scale this up and then I'm also going to rotate this and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis rotate that over and I'm going to bring it back here and just kind of push this plane back a little bit if I go into the camera view I do want to scale this up so it fits all the camera so we just have a plane here in the background and I'm going to be creating a cool procedural texture in the background so to make this texture I'm going to hop right over here to the shading workspace so I have the 3d space right here and I'm going to hold down the z button and go into the rendered view and then I have the shader 
meter nodes right here. So I'm going to click on new here to add a new material and I can just rename this to background. So I'm actually going to select the principled shader and I'm going to press X to delete it. I'm now going to press shift A and I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for a gradient texture and let's put the gradient up here and then to preview it I'm just going to put the color here into the surface so I can preview that gradient. Now I want to click on the linear here and I want to instead change it to spherical. So now it's going to be a circle. Now you can see the circle is over here so I want to bring it up into the center. So I'm going to select the gradient texture and I'm going to press control T and that is using the feature of the node wrangler and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now if you don't have the node wrangler add-on enabled you can click here on edit and then you can open up the preferences. And then if you click right over here on the add-ons tab you can go here to the search and you can start to type in node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on so it's built in a blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So you can then just close the user preferences. So let me just do this again. So if you select a texture you can press Control T and that's using a feature of the node wrangler add-on and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. So I can use this mapping node here to actually move the location of the gradient. So I'm going to click on the X location and then drag down once and then let go and this way we can change both values at the same time. And I'm going to type in negative 0.5. So negative 0.5 and enter. And why I'm changing this to negative 0.5 is because if I drag this you can see by turning it to negative 0.5 we're bringing it over. Whereas before, before we used the mapping note it was down here but then by changing this to negative 0.5 it's going to bring it up and bring it over so now the gradient texture is right down there in the center. Now it is a little bit hard to see but it is kind of darker there on the edges. So I now want to mix this with a noise texture because I want it to be a little bit noisy. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and let's put the noise texture under the gradient texture. And then I want to mix these two together so I can press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the mix RGB and let's drop the mix RGB right here after the gradient texture. And then I want the gradient texture to be going into color one and then the noise texture factor is going to go into color two. And then also I want to use the object coordinates so that the noise texture is placed on the objects more evenly. So I'm going to pull out a wire from the object and let's stick that into the vector. So back over here to the mix RGB I want to mix the gradient with the noise texture and the noise texture is going to make the edges of the gradient look kind of noisy. So what I'm going to do is click on this mix here and I'm going to change this to the soft light. So it's kind of here in the center, the soft light. And now you can see that it's all noisy but we still have that dark area around the edges. Now I want to make this darker so let's press shift A and I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the color ramp and we're going to stick the color ramp right here after the soft light. So I can use this color ramp to adjust the brightness. So if I drag this tab over here you can see it's going to get darker and so now we have that gradient but it is very noisy. And then I do want to change some of the noise texture settings so I'm going to turn the detail here all the way to the max of 15. And then let's also turn the scale down to just like a three. All right, so I can go back over here to the color ramp and I'm gonna click on this white tab right here click on the color and I'm going to make this like a dark blue something like that and then I also want to add a little bit of kind of a bluish grayish color so I'm going to hold down the control key and click right here in the center in the center of these two tabs here and that's going to create another tab and then if I click on this one click on the color I'm going to turn this up a little bit and I'm going to make this a little bit more of a gray color so something like that so if I go into the camera view you can see that is looking super cool it kind of looks magical and fantasy and I think it looks pretty cool so now let's make the material of the pumpkin look better. So I'm just going to select the pumpkin material right here or select the pumpkin object and here we have our texture and it's going into the base color. So one thing that I want to do is make it more shiny so let's take the roughness here and I'm going to turn it down to like a 0.3 and that way the pumpkin is a bit more shiny. Now I also want to give the pumpkin a little bit of subsurf so I'm going to turn the subsurface value right here to a 0.2 and this is going to allow a little bit of light to go through and you can see there's also a subsurface color so I actually want to take the color here from the pumpkin and I'm going to put that into the subsurface color right there. And so now you can see this just looking a little bit more soft and looking a bit more like food. You can see if I turn the subsurface way up you can see what it's doing. So it almost looks a little bit like skin or it kind of looks fleshy. So I'm just going to turn the subsurf to 0.2 so there's just a little bit of subsurf. 
Now I do think the pumpkin could also be just a little bit more red. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the shift key and I'm gonna right click and drag over these two wires and then let go. And that's going to add a reroute here. So I can now just plug a node up here and it will affect the subsurface color and the base color. So I'm gonna press shift A, let's go here to the search and I'm gonna search for the RGB curves and I'm gonna stick the RGB curves here after the pumpkin texture. And then I can click over here on the R for red and I'm gonna click right here to add a dot and I'm gonna bring this up a little bit just so there's a bit more red. And then if I also click here on G for green, I could drag this down a little bit and you can see as I drag that down, it's looking more orange. So I'm just gonna drag that down a little bit more, not too much, but this way it looks a little bit more orange and then bring that up a little bit. So of course this is a procedural node and so it's not actually going to affect the actual texture. So if you wanted to upload this model to like a game engine or upload it to Sketchfab or use it in another 3D software, then you would want to texture bake this or you would want to actually color correct the actual texture so you could go to your computer go to the file where you save the texture and you could open this up with a 2d program and then you could change the RGB curves and kind of edit the colors a little bit I'm just gonna do that here in blender though I just wanted to make the pumpkin a little bit more red all right now I also want to add another thing which is totally optional you don't have to add it if you don't want to but I want to add some little glowing dots here around the pumpkin just to make it look kind Kind of fantasy. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's click on the Voronoi texture and I'm going to drop it down here. And then with the Voronoi texture selected, I can press control T. And again, that's using the feature of the node wrangler and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I don't actually need the mapping, so I can click on the mapping and I can press X to delete it. And let's pull out a wire from the object and I'm going to stick that into the vector. So I'm now going to take the distance here from the Voronoi texture and I'm going to put that into the emission of the principled shader. So just stick it there into the emission. So the Voronoi texture is all these little dots, and so where the dots are, it's going to actually be glowing. Now we need to actually use a color ramp to sharpen this up and make the dots smaller. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp, and I'm going to put the color ramp right here after the Voronoi. So I now can drag these together, and it's going to make it more contrasty. And I actually want to flip these colors, so flip it so the white is over here and the block is over here and now we have all those little dots there and I'm gonna drag this way over so the dots are very small and then I can also click on the scale here and I can turn the scale up I think I'll just go with like a 17 so there are just a few little dots here and there and then we're using the color ramp to sharpen that Voronoi texture so now I just have some little white dots here and there and then I do want to make it yellow so click on the white tab here and click on this color and I'm just gonna make it slightly yellow and make it very white it is gonna be mostly white but still Still very yellow and again this is a procedural texture so it's not actually a texture map so if you wanted to upload the model to sketchfab or use it in a game engine or something like that then you would just want to bake the emission maps and I actually have a blender texture baking tutorial playlist where I have lots of different tutorials on how to do texture baking in blender so I'll have the links in the description if you'd like to check out that playlist now you can see that these little dots here aren't very bright so I'm gonna turn up the emission strength and that's gonna make them glow more so I'm I'm going to turn up the emission strength maybe to just like a 50 something like that and you can see they now have a little glow around them and then if you click right here back on the color I do want to make this a bit more orange and maybe a bit of a stronger color so something like that so there we go we now have some really cool glowing dots there on the pumpkin let's also do the pumpkin stem so I'm gonna click on the stem here let's click on new to make a new material and I can just rename the material to stem and then this is just gonna be a very basic material I'm I am going to change the base color to just kind of like a brown color and make it a bit darker, something like that. I'm also going to turn up the subsurface a little bit, maybe to just like a 0.2, so it looks a little bit more organic. And then right here on the subsurface color, I'm just going to make this kind of like an orangey color, maybe even turn the subsurface to like a 0.1, so there isn't quite as much subsurface scattering. And then I will turn the roughness down to maybe like a 0.4, so it is a little bit more shiny. So just a very simple stylized material. I like how that looks. You could of course do texture painting on this as well. You could like add a noise texture or something like that or just do some texture painting. Um, but I like how that is. I'm just going to leave it as a very 
simple material. Now I also want to create kind of like a little fake shadow on the ground, so let's add that. So I'm going to actually select the background object right here, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it, and I'm going to bring it over so it's underneath the pumpkin. And then I'm going to press Alt R, and Alt R is going to clear the rotation values. And then I can press 1 on the numpad to go to front view. I'm going to press G to grab and bring this up and stick it up there. And I can press 7 on the numpad to go to top view, and I'm just going to bring this over and maybe scale it down a bit. And I can press 0 on the numpad to go into the camera view, and I think I'll scale this down a bit more and bring it back a bit. So we are going to now edit this material and just make kind of like a little fake shadow with the gradient. So I first want to make this a separate material so it doesn't affect the background. So I'm just going to go right over here to the material, or you could also do it right over here. And I'm going to click on this little file icon right here, and that's going to duplicate the material, but it's going to keep the same data. And then I can just rename this material to ground. And let's press Control S to save. So I'm now going to click on the noise texture, and I can press X to delete it. I'm also going to click on the mix RGB here and press X to delete it, and then click on the color ramp and press X to delete it. So what I'm going to do is use this gradient texture to create kind of like a fake shadow, and then the rest of it is going to be transparent. So we want to mix between a black color and a transparent shader. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the transparent shader. Let's click on this, and I'm just going to drop it right down here. And then I can take the transparent shader, and let's put that up to the surface. Now you can see that it's not actually transparent right now, and that's because we need to click right over here on the material properties, and right here on the settings, and on the blend mode and the shadow mode, we want to click on this, and we want to change this to alpha alpha hashed and also right here change this to alpha hashed now if you're using the cycles rendering engine you don't need to do this but this is just one setting in blender ev that you need to turn on to get the transparency to work so now you can see that this is totally transparent but i now want to mix this with an rgb value and it's going to be black so I'm going to press Shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for RGB, and I'm going to stick this down here, and then on the color here, I'm just going to make this fully black. So now we have our transparent, and we have our color, and I want to mix these two together. So I'm going to press Shift A, and let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a mix shader. And let's put the mix shader right here in this wire, and then the mix shader output is going to go into the material output surface, and then I want the transparent to go into the top one, and then this RGB here is going to go into the bottom one. So normally you wouldn't want to put color values into a mix shader, because mix shaders are used to mix two shaders together, not an RGB value, but in this case it's totally fine because we're just creating this black shadow here. So if I drag the factor all the way up to 1, you can see it's going to be fully black because it's using all of the RGB. If I turn the factor all the way to 0, it's now going to be completely using the transparent. So the factor value is blending between the two shaders, but I don't want to evenly blend between them. I want the center to be black and then the rest out here to be transparent. So that is where the gradient texture comes in. So I can take the color here from the gradient, and I'm going to put that into the factor. Now I want to make this much sharper because it is very hard to see, so I'm going to press Shift A, and let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and let's stick the color ramp right here, and the color ramp is going to be between the gradient and the mix shader. So I can now drag these two tabs together, and that's going to make it more contrasty. And it might be a bit easier to see if I kind of navigate down here. You can see it's a bit grainy, but that's okay. It'll look, it'll look better once it's rendered. But if I drag this back and then drag this over, you can see we now have a very cool gradient right there. So it's basically black in the center, and then it fades out as it comes out. And if I press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view, I can now scale this down and make it quite a bit smaller. And you can see it's kind of just adding a fake little shadow down there. Although if I zoom in here, you can see it's kind of being cut off a bit. So I'm going to drag this back a little bit and drag this over. And I also might want to scale the entire thing up just so that it's going out of the camera view. And let's bring this back a little bit and bring that over, just like that. So now we have kind of that little fake shadow there. All right, now I also want to add a depth of field to focus on the pumpkin, and then everything else will be just a little bit blurred. So if you click right up here to select the camera, you can click over here to go to the camera settings. And I'm going to turn on the depth of field right here. 
And then if you click on this arrow here to open up the depth of field settings, we need a focus distance. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the focus distance and press the E key. And that is going to bring up the eyedropper and then I'm going to select an area that I want to focus on. So I'm just going to click right there and it's going to detect how far away it is. So this was 7.1. So I can now take the f-stop value and if I turn the f-stop way down, it's just focusing here but then everything else is blurred. So I'm just going to start to turn this up and I think maybe turning it up to like a 0.6 or maybe like a 0.7 will look pretty good. And actually I think I might just turn this up to like a 0.1, that's a bit better, but the background is quite blurred, but then the pumpkin is in focus, so that's looking really nice. All right, so we are almost done with this. I'm just gonna click right back here to go to the layout, but I do wanna duplicate two other pumpkins and put them down here. So I'm gonna select the stem and then shift select the pumpkin, and I'm gonna press seven on the numpad for top view, and I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate, and then S to scale and R to rotate and G to grab. And I'm just gonna move this over here and go into the camera view by pressing the zero on the numpad. And I might scale this up and I'm just gonna stick this right down there. Also bring it down a bit and scale it up a bit just like that so we just have another pumpkin and that's looking pretty cool. I could also select the camera and just bring the camera down a little bit so you can see more of it. And I think I will select the stem and then shift select the pumpkin. And I think I will just scale this down a little bit more and stick it right there. And I can also rotate this around. And then I wanna duplicate one more and put one down here. So I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate and then R to rotate. Let's hit Z to rotate this on the Z axis. And then I could scale this down and put another smaller pumpkin pumpkin right down here. Just like that, maybe make it a little bit bigger though. So I now want to change the material on these other pumpkins. So I'm gonna click right back over here to the shading tab, and I'm gonna click on this first pumpkin here, and then right up here on the materials, I can click on this button right here to duplicate this. So now it's a separate material, but it has the same data. And right here on the name, I can just rename this to pumpkin two. And then I just wanna change the colors a bit. So I'm gonna press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm gonna search for the hue saturation value, and I'm gonna drop the hue saturation value after the RGB curves. So I can now drag the hue, and that is gonna change the hue of those colors, and I'm gonna hold down the Shift key as I drag this to make my movements more sensitive, so I can play around with the hue and get it to exactly how I like. So something like that is pretty cool, kind of like a green pumpkin. This is kind of like a fantasy kind of stylized pumpkin. And then also on the RGB curves, you can play around with these values if you want to change this. So I think I'll turn the red down a bit. And if I click here on the C, that is going to change like the brightness. So I might actually make this a bit darker. Let's see how that looks. Something like that, you can kind of play around with the values there to change that. Something like that is pretty cool. And now also these look like they're a bit bigger and I believe that's just because of the depth of field. You can see the depth of field is kind of making it blurred a bit, but I could just make those a bit darker. So if you go here to the emission strength, you can turn the emission strength down a bit. And also if you wanted to, you could kind of play around with this color ramp here to make it more contrasty. Something like that. So maybe I'll just turn the emission strength to like a 20 so they're not quite as bright. And then let's click on this one here and this one I'm going to make a blue one but of course you could make these whatever color you wanted you could also just leave them how they are or you could make this like a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow and, and kind of keep them the natural color of the pumpkin but I want to make these a bit stylized so I'm going to have a blue pumpkin even though pumpkins aren't blue so I'm just going to click on this pumpkin and then right over here on the material I just want to click right here to duplicate the material and on the name here I can just rename this to pumpkin three and then I want to do the same thing so I'm going to press shift a I'm going to go here here to the search and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value and let's put that after the RGB curves and then you can hold down the shift key and drag the hue and that's going to change it so I'm just going to drag this around until it is kind of like a dark blue color so something like that is pretty cool maybe even slightly purple and then if you click here on the RGB curves you can kind of play around with these color values to change the colors and change how it looks so I might turn this up a bit and that's going to make it a bit darker if I click here on the B for blue I could also drag this up a bit so that it's a bit of a stronger blue color. And let's see, I think maybe turning down the green looks a bit nicer. Just kind of play around with these. Um, if you turn the red way down, then there's actually going to look a lot more purple. And of course, this doesn't really make any sense that if you're turning this down, it's going to make it more purple. You can see it's kind of adding more red, but that's because of the hue saturation value node. So the hue saturation value node is changing the hue. So that's why it doesn't really make sense that you would turn this down and it's actually more purple. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're playing around with this. Like right here on the C, 
if I turn this up, this should make it brighter, but it's actually kind of making it a darker color because we changed around the hue saturation value. And if you wanted to, you could also change the saturation if you want to make this a bit more saturated. So I might turn this up to two. And then also on the value here, this is going to make it brighter or darker. So you could change that if you wanted to. All right, so we are almost done. This is looking really cool. Let's go right back over here to the layout. But there is just one more thing that I want to add to make this look very nice. I want to add some glowing orbs all around the pumpkins. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go back to solid view. And I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go here to mesh and I'm going to add a cube and let's press S to scale. I'm just going to scale this way up and I'm going to scale it pretty big so it fills the entire scene. And then I'm going to be creating a procedural texture for the orbs. So I'm going to click right back over here on the shading tab and let's click on new here to add a new material and I can just rename this material to orbs. So this material is going to be pretty simple. We basically want an emission shader for the orbs, but then we want the rest of the cube to be transparent. So I'm going to click on the principled shader here and I'm going to press X to delete it and I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for an emission shader. Drop this up here and then I can press shift day let's go to the search and I'm also going to search for the transparent shader and I'm going to stick this down here and then I want to mix these together so I can select the emission and then shift select the transparent and with them both selected I can press control zero and control zero is going to use one of the features of the node wrangler and it's going to add the mix shader and mix them together and then I can put the mix shader here into the surface of the material output now if I change the factor that's going to blend between them but if I turn it up to one it's fully dark and that's because we need to tell Blender Eevee to use the transparency. So again, if you go right over here to the material properties on the blend mode and shadow mode, we just want to change this to alpha clipped and then also on the shadow mode alpha clipped. And now it's using the transparency so we can see through the cube. But if I turn the factor all the way to zero, now it's using the emission. So instead of evenly blending between the values, I want to add a Voronoi texture. And the Voronoi texture is going to give the little texture for the dots. And we're going to put that into the factor to tell it where it's going to be the emission and where it's going to be the transparent. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture. And let's just drop this right back here. And then with the Voronoi texture selected, I can press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I don't need the mapping so I can select it and press X to delete it. And let's plug the object here into the vector of the Voronoi. So it's using the object coordinates and that way the Voronoi texture will be placed on the object more evenly. And then I can take the distance here and let's put that into the factor. So the Voronoi is controlling where it's going to be transparent and where it's going to be the emission. Now I want to change this because it's way too big right now so let's press shift a I'm gonna go here to the search and I'm gonna search for the color ramp node and I'm gonna stick the color ramp node right here after the Voronoi and then if I click on the white tab and drag over you can see it's gonna make it more contrasty so all those dots are much smaller and then let's also change the scale here to add much more of those dots so I might change this to like a 30 something like that I actually need to make this a lot bigger so maybe like a 50 something like that is pretty good now I want to make this much brighter so let's take the strength here and I'm going to turn this to like a 100 on the emission and that way the orbs are going to be glowing. So if I zoom into them, you can see they are glowing. And then also right here on this color, if I click on this color here on the emission, I'm going to make this kind of a yellowy color. So something like that, maybe kind of an orangey yellow color and maybe even make it a little bit brighter. So it's a bit stronger. Now there is a problem here, and that is that the Voronoi texture is only showing up on the faces. So actually inside here, there isn't any orbs. There's only orbs on the edges. So I'm going to use a cool little method to make it look like there are orbs floating all around inside the cube, but they're actually just going to be on the faces. So I'm going to press the tab key to go to edit mode and I'm going to press the A key to select all of the geometry and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then hit S to scale, and I'm gonna scale this down so that there is a cube inside the cube and place it there. Then I can press Shift D again to duplicate and then S to scale, and I'm gonna scale it down even more and just place it right there. So now I have another cube inside that cube. And then I might just do this one more time, so Shift D to duplicate, 
and then S to scale and make that really small. And because we're doing this in edit mode, it's all one object. So now if I kind of move through here by holding down the control key and clicking with my middle mouse wheel, I can move back and forth or you can just move around and it appears as though there's a bunch of glowing orbs all around, even though they're actually just flat on the faces. So if I press zero to go into the camera view, you can now see there's a bunch of orbs. Now that's way too strong. So let's turn the strength to just like 100 so that it's not quite as strong. And then right here on the color ramp, I could also drag this down to make it a bit more contrasty. And then if there's still too many, you can change the scale here. So I might just turn the scale to like a 30, something like that, maybe even a bit less. And also the depth of field is making some of them look really big. So you could just like turn this way down if you want those to be a bit smaller. And right here on the Voronoi texture scale, I'm going to turn that to like a 45. So that there are just some little orbs here and there. Now, because the depth of field is a little bit strong, it's still making these very blurry. So I'm going to click right up here to select the camera. Just click there in the outline and then go to the depth of field here. And I'm going to turn up the f-stop a bit so I might just turn that up a bit more maybe to like a two and that way there's going to be less of a depth of field maybe even turn that to like a three and that way some of those orbs are not quite as blurred and that looks a bit better all right so this is it so we are ready to render the final image so just press Control s to save and then to render the image you can press f12 or click on render and then click on render image and there we have it so there is the final image now to save this image you can just click right up here on image and then click on on save as and I'm just going to save this as pumpkin.png and I'll just save it in a folder with my other files and click on save as so there we have it so there is the finished stylized hand painted pumpkin artwork so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching and if you'd like to help support me and this channel you can purchase the tutorial files on my gumroad store and my patreon page I'll have the links in the description and checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships are all really great ways to help support me and this channel. And I do appreciate all of your support. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.